Welcome back. Two apparently unrelated crimes 11 years apart. One a relatively harmless teenage prank, the other a cowardly murder of a Canberra grandmother. 72-year-old Irma Palaxix was killed in her own home in 1999. Now, 15 years on, the killers probably thought they got away with it, but they haven't counted on a young, dogged detective or some extraordinary new forensic science. And be aware, this story does contain some violence. ACT police have vowed to hunt down those responsible. It was the, the callous nature of the attack. When you're talking about um, crimes, it, it sits down there right at the, the lowest end. For up to two hours, the burglars repeatedly bashed the couple until Mrs Palasics died. There's not many crimes that go lower than hurting an old couple in their own home. Please, please. Australian Federal Police Detective Jared Dunbar is the type of young copper that criminals should really worry about. Uh, every day I'm trying to think of new ways that we can bring the investigation to a close. Your family and friends think you might be a bit obsessed? I think so, yeah. Armed with a criminology degree and the cutting-edge science of DNA technology, Jared is a time-travelling detective. On the frontier of forensic investigation, he hopes to crack Canberra's most notorious cold case 15 years on. What they can't do is change what they did in 99, and they've left their DNA and will always have that. Um, so it's just a matter of time before the forensic science catches up. It was another time. Australia, safe, secure and prosperous, attracted a wave of refugees from communist Europe. Among them, Gregor and Irma Palaxics, who settled in Canberra with their two daughters. That's moi. That's my husband. Their eldest, Liz Makita, remembers hard times. They came here with absolutely nothing. They worked, worked, worked to make it a better life for their children. They had to work for everything. Liz remembers her mother as a tough cookie, hard but fair. As the family became prosperous through their joinery business, Irma started collecting expensive gold jewellery. When they sold an investment property, instead of putting the money in the bank, they hid it in their home. Did you know that they were squirrelling and hoarding money and valuables in the house? It should have been in a safe or in a bank? Not to the extent that they did. We, we had no idea that uh, they were doing it like that. I know that Mum did keep money at home. Uh, she liked to pay things with cash. She didn't have any credit cards. They just didn't believe in it. But we just didn't realise that the uh, money was such huge amounts. But someone did know. The elderly couple were not at home when thieves first broke into their garage in 1997, stealing $100,000. We think they knew that there was something there, but not necessarily exactly where it was. How do you think they knew there was something there? From what we understand, Gregor and Irma obviously spent a lot of time down at the, the Hungarian Australian Club. They were fairly generous people down there. Um, from what we understand, they would often uh, buy people drinks or food and, and were quite open with their wealth. Despite the break-in, the couple continued with their social life and their generosity down at the Hungarian club, apparently unaware that someone there may have been targeting them. A year later, in 1998, their home was robbed again. But this time, Irma stumbled across the two male intruders. She was assaulted uh, by one of the males. He punched her in the face um, and forced her to the ground. On the ground, he punched her a number of times in the face and she began to scream. To muffle her screams and to, to gain control over her, he's placed a, his hand over her mouth and around her neck, uh, which caused Irma to fight back um, more. Um, and during that, she's actually managed to pull a balaclava off the offender's head. Um, at 
which point he's threatened her, telling her that he would be back before taking off through the backyard. Police are urging anybody who may have seen the men run from the Red Hill property to come forward. Afterwards, Irma was too scared to show her face, but she made an appeal on local Canberra News for anyone with information to come forward. I said, don't kill me, don't kill me, and uh, I screaming. Irma was only able to give police a partial description of the thief, but they had some evidence. Hair samples from the balaclava Irma had pulled from his head confirmed the attacker had light brown hair and a beard. Irma said he was between 165 and 170 centimetres tall. After that, your parents decided to move. Yes, Mum just didn't feel safe at the place anymore, which is understandable. And did you say to them then maybe they should stop this practice of distrusting the banks with their money? Oh, we've always told them that you should, you know, put your money in a safe or, value, or in a bank or something, but they didn't do it. It doesn't look like it probably has changed much in 15 years. No, not much has changed. The Palaxics hoped that moving here to a quieter suburb would prevent any more break-ins. It didn't. 13 months later, in November 1999, a third intrusion. This time, the thieves knew who they were up against. They came to the house prepared with, with duct tape and cable ties. Um, so it, it's every possibility that they just felt that they needed to restrain her as quickly as they could uh, because they knew that she wouldn't go down quietly. They came up through here. After breaking in through the bathroom window, the two invaders went straight to the lounge where Gregor and Irma were watching TV. The lounge room in the kitchen area. And down through there, the couple are sitting on the sofa. That's right. It, it just started off as a straight assault straight away. They had no chance to react. So they offered no resistance? No resistance. Come on. Irma probably would have been screaming, uh, from what we understand, according to Gregor but no resistance in terms of a physical resistance. Where's the money? Tell me where the money is. So Gregor was knocked down to the floor around here. Where's the money? Where the male assaulted him on the ground and made a number of demands for money. Where is the money? Before he tied him up with some cable ties and some duct tape. At one point, Gregor actually managed to, to free himself um, from those binds. Uh, and the male returned and pulled a telephone cable from the wall and rebound his hands and then placed him on his stomach. And meanwhile, out in the corridor... That's where Irma was laying. Irma's right here. She was laying on the ground down here. And she'd been badly beaten. Badly beaten, uh, severe injuries around the face and the head. Uh, and she was bound as well, cable ties and duct tape. They broke Irma's nose, then gagged her mouth with duct tape before ransacking her home for two hours. During that time, Irma was slowly choking to death. The blood from her, her broken nose had actually flowed down into her trachea and blocked it, uh, which meant that she wasn't able to, with the duct tape over her mouth, she wasn't able to regurgitate that blood. That's a horrendous crime, isn't it? It is. It's, it's an absolutely uh, horrendous way to die. This is personal. It is. It is. Everyone has grand grandparents, everyone has, has parents that are, that are elderly, uh, and that's the, last thing that you'd, that's the last thing that you'd want to happen to them, and it's the last way that you would want your mother or your grandmother to suffer. I can still feel her terror, her pain, and I'm sure they would have really tortured her to get out of her wherever she may have hidden anything. Because they wouldn't know otherwise, would they? Until now, police have never revealed this crime scene footage taken in the hours after Irma died. I 
I know that this case is something of an obsession with you, but I find that usually the coppers don't give us this kind of access. Why are you doing that? It's important that, that people understand how brutal this was. Oftentimes we, we keep a lot of information to ourselves, but this case is 15 years old, and it's important that people out there understand exactly what these people went through inside this house. After the murderers had gone, Gregor freed himself. He reconnected the phone and called Triple O. Police emergency. Hello? Yes? My name is Gregor Palafis. Somebody broke in killing my wife. Someone broke into your house? Yes. And did what? You're killing her. OK, whereabouts is your wife at the moment? In the corridor. In the corridor? Yes. Yeah. Everywhere, blood, everything, you know. There's blood everywhere, is there? Yeah. <laughs> this is never before seen footage of Gregor after the third break in. The force of the trauma is obvious in his blackened, heavily bruised face. And afterwards, you know, sitting in my chest, just tell me, what is the money? What is the money? Where's the money? Said, yeah, what is the money? Gregor died several years later, never knowing who killed his wife. For although the murderers had left behind their DNA profiles, it was 1999, and it would be years before science would catch up. The case went across into our cold case area, so it was a, a case that had no identified offenders um, and was really waiting for forensic science to, to bring us to a point where we can identify some new investigative leads. Welcome back to 60 Minutes and the cold case murder of Irma Palaxix. The Canberra grandmother was killed in cold blood in her own home in 1999. Frustratingly, her killers were never found and it remained a cold case for over a decade. But a teenage prank involving one of the killer's sons is about to change all that. Well, there's a huge number of cases stacked up here. Thousands of investigations, that are, some are unsolved, others are awaiting prosecution. Evidence of crimes up to half a century old sit in this Australia Federal Police warehouse. And it's here where the cold case of Irma Palaxic's murder collected dust for 13 years until two years ago when Detective Jared Dunbar resurrected it. Our systems are getting so much more sensitive, so we're pulling DNA off things that never, that previously you could never get DNA from. So it's only becoming more sensitive. After more than a decade, we can reasonably assume that the killer was starting to feel fairly relaxed. He thought he'd got away with it, that he'd got away with murder. But here in the forensic science lab, it's an entirely different story because the long arm of the law is able to reach back into the past. With old evidence and new science, the cold case is warming up. Australian Federal Police Chief Scientist Dr Simon Walsh has been enlisted by Detective Dunbar to do the forensic biology. Good investigators know um, that forensic scientists can help them achieve their outcomes. These are the tape lifts um, that were taken from the balaclava in 1998. The first quest is to prove the same person who assaulted Irma in 1998 came back again a year later for the robbery that ended in her murder. With new science, tape lifts taken from the balaclava that Irma pulled off her attacker's head during the second robbery in 1998 could prove that it was the same man. So what we're doing now is time travelling, in fact, aren't we? We're going back. It gives us a chance now to um, recover DNA, any DNA that's present from that point back over 15 years ago. Um, and, and see if we can isolate the, the profile. It's here with this machine where the amazing alchemy of modern forensics takes place. The extraction robot gives Detective Dunbar his first breakthrough. From that DNA, we were able to say that categorically and with a forensic link that whoever was there in 1998 that assaulted Irma also left their DNA at the crime scene in 1999. So something you suspected but couldn't prove yep. in the passage of time, mm -hmm. in 15 years, you now know. We now know conclusively that the same people were there, or at mm -hmm. least the same person. 
but the most intriguing scientific triumph was yet to come. Dr. Walsh uses a brand new DNA search that links criminals with any other member of their family who commits a crime and leaves behind traces of their DNA. This type of approach is, is really the last resort, where you're trying um, everything you can possibly try to help make an identification and help resolve an unresolved crime. So the sins of the fathers it can be detected through the children? Yeah. It's called familial DNA. The idea is to establish if any relatives of the killers have committed crimes and left their DNA behind. So the trail leads here? That's right. To the pitch and putt? That's right. It's closed and run down now, but four years ago, this was a thriving putt-putt golf business in Canberra. This CCTV footage was taken on the 16th of May 2010, when five young men broke into the business. The minor break-in seems totally unconnected to the brutal murder of Irma, but the blood from one of these men found at the scene was put into the ACT database. So the DNA that was left here links 11 years back to Irma's murder on the 6th of November 1999, and we can say from that DNA link that whoever was here in 2010 is a close family relative of one of the males that were involved in her murder in 1999. So once you have the kid who left the blood, you can check out his family tree and you will get to the murderer. That's right. That's amazing, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And that, that's the sort of developments that we're making and that's why whoever was involved shouldn't, shouldn't be resting easy that, that they'll get away with it forever. In this case, a familial link on a parent-child comparison came up as a, as a strong link. That means one of these five young men is the son of the murderer. And it was here, just across the road, at the Slovenian Australian Association earlier in the night that police believe the group attended an 18th birthday party. Whoever was at that party will be able to identify who those persons are in the CCTV. And so if you do know who that person is, it's important that you contact us and provide that information. Detective Dunbar wants to make this clear. There's a $500,000 reward for information leading to the prosecution of Irma's murderers. The important message here is that we're obviously trying to solve a murder. In relation to the damage to the property here, it's not something that we'd be actively pursuing. So, so we're you're telling the kids they can come they forward can come and there'll forward be and no prosecution? To That's right, come forward. Uh, there's half a million reasons why you should be picking up that phone or walking into a police station. Jared Dunbar is confident he will crack this cold case and that in the end, science will be the undoing of a murderer who thought he'd got away with it. It's something that can be solved and will be solved um, that really attracted me to it. Do you need a lucky break or is it inevitable? I think it's inevitable. And certainly it hasn't been unsolved 15 years because it's easy. Uh, but I certainly think that it's just a, a matter of um, a matter of time before we, we get to that point where we're able to identify him. My beautiful parents are gone. Mm. While Liz and her family have learnt to live with the uncertainty of not knowing who killed their mother, 15 years on, they hope for justice. I don't want to be doing this, but I have to do it for Mum's memory because she was a fighter she wouldn't have let them get away with anything. She would have fought until her last breath. And I've got to, I've got to do the same thing. So you, 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 you feel a sense of injustice of these people around there? Exactly, exactly. And that's all I'm after, revenge now. They just don't, do not deserve to breathe the air that, that uh, people breathe. And if you have any information for police, call Crime Stoppers on 1800 000. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.